Hello friends, all of you, you are welcome to my YouTube channel, uh, Net Chem Guru. Uh, my channel focus on chemistry education, so uh, you can watch uh, chemistry related videos in my channel. Today I am going to uh, tell about, going to explain about uh, how to balance chemical equations and uh, in that uh, today I am going to talk about partial equations method. Uh, as you know that reaction must be balanced otherwise uh, it, it violates the law of conservation of mass for example uh, if you have a simple reaction like s2 plus o2 gives water s2o if you don't balance it then what happens see there uh, here are two hydrogen atoms and here are two oxygen atoms so uh, in the product there is only two hydrogen and one oxygen so uh, do you see that uh, uh, these atoms are balanced surely not so uh, in this side there are two hydrogen in this side also two hydrogen they are balanced and in this side uh, there are two oxygen atoms but here is only one oxygen atom but oxygen atom is not balanced so you can see that uh, where is that one oxygen being lost uh, so it violates it violates uh, the law of law of conservation of mass conservation of mass you know? this this law is violated here if you don't balance the chemical equations so um, uh, if you want uh, not to violate the law of conservation of mass in the reaction then you must balance this reaction uh, so uh, atoms can neither be created atoms can neither be created atoms can neither be created nor be destroyed nor be destroyed so atoms uh, are not not created and not destroyed in the chemical reactions because nuclear reactions are only the reactions where atoms can be created or can be destroyed. So these chemical reactions cannot produce uh, any new atom and cannot destroy the atom. So uh, you must balance the chemical equation to uh, favor the law of conservation of mass. So uh, the reaction must be balanced like this way. S2 plus O2 gives uh, two water. Uh, in this way if you balance the chemical reaction then atom is seems to be not created and not uh, destroyed so uh, the law of conservation of mass is not violated so uh, if you are the beginners then uh, you may um, uh, wonder that why chemical reactions should be balanced but uh, chemical reactions should be balanced to maintain the law of conservation of mass and uh, to maintain that uh, atoms can neither be created nor be destroyed so every reactions must be balanced so uh, while balancing a chemical reactions there are a number of methods to balance a chemical equation so most um, uh, some of the popular rea reaction uh, balancing methods are uh, some of the methods are heat and trial method you know that heat and trial method uh, you might have done this in your high school level heat and trial method number two is partial equations method partial equations method uh, partial equations method and number third is oxidation number method uh, which is called as ON, ON method that is oxidation number method and number four is ion electron method so generally there are four methods to balance the chemical equations one is heat and trial method next is partial equations method and oxidation number method and ion electron methods so out of all methods uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, partial equations method so what is partial equation method and how to balance the chemical equation by using partial equations method so uh, let's talk something about partial equation method okay uh, in partial equations method uh, uh, in partial equation method you should have uh, the idea of, of three different things so for partial equation method uh, you should have idea of uh, criteria of product formation criteria of product formation uh, you should know that uh, which compound give which kind of partial product in the reaction so criteria of product formation you must know and in number two you must know about nature of oxides nature of oxides uh, nature of oxides uh, if oxides are produced in the partial uh, product as a partial product in the main reactant then you must know that what kind of uh, nature of that oxide is uh, whether it is acidic or basic so you must know the nature of oxides there and similarly uh, number third uh, concept you must know is nascent oxygen nascent oxygen or nascent hydrogen production nascent uh, hydrogen or nascent oxygen production which one is uh, produced in the reaction you must know this so uh, before attempting your partial equation method you must know about uh, these three different things that in the reaction what are the criteria of product formation 
which would perks are partially formed during the chemical reaction and uh, nature of oxide you must know and nascent hydrogen oxygen production which uh, reaction produce nascent hydrogen and which type of reaction produce nascent oxygen you should know these these three things so if you know these three things then you can uh, easily balance the reaction by uh, using partial equations method uh, partial equations method uh, is generally used for the compounds which are oxidizing agent and having oxygen atom as one of the constituent. Uh, for example, the reactions involving uh, reactions involving uh, KMN of potassium permanganate, potassium dichromate, uh, similarly nitric acid, hydrogen peroxide, uh, MnO2, manganese dioxide, O O3, ozone. Uh, these are some compounds uh, which can um, which are balanced by the partial equation method if these compounds are involved there uh, then uh, these equations can be easily balanced by the uh, partial equations method similarly as to SO4 etc so these all are oxidizing agent and they have oxygen so uh, in these compounds can if these compounds are involved in the reaction then these reaction can be easily balanced by the partial equation method okay uh, so you must know that during the reaction which is the type of uh, products are formed in the reaction that you must know uh, for example if your reactions involve your KMnO4 or potassium dichromate then what kind of partial products are formed you must know first of all so I'm going to talk about uh, some simple reactions which uh, these reactants produced uh, if your reactions have uh, KMnO4 uh, then it is always decomposed it is supposed to be decomposed into potassium oxide and manganese oxide plus nascent oxygen okay this you must uh, know that when KMnO4 in, is involved in the reaction then the, the, this decompose into partial product like potassium oxide K2O manganese oxide and uh, nascent oxygen similarly if there is potassium dichromate uh, that is involved in your chem in, in your chemical reaction then that uh, gives K2O plus Cr2O3 chromic oxide plus nascent oxygen so wherever potassium dichromate is involved in the reaction then that gives potassium oxide chromic oxide uh, then um, nascent oxygen similarly uh, if there is involvement of nitric acid then nitric acid gives uh, different kinds of product depending upon its uh, concentration if uh, conch nitric acid is involved there then it always give NO2 plus water plus nascent oxygen when it decomposes then if uh, nitric acid is uh, 1 is to 1 moderately conch we say if moderately conch type of nitric acid is there then it gives NO plus as to plus nascent oxygen and similarly if nitric acid is dilute dilute type then it gives uh, n2o plus water plus nascent oxygen okay so uh, these all are the partial product you must know that uh, when these reactants are involved in your reaction then first step is they decompose into such type of partial product if there is h2o2 then you always make as 2 plus nascent oxygen and if there is ozone then you always make o2 plus nascent oxygen and similarly if you have H2SO4 conch, conch H2SO4 then you decompose this into sulfur dioxide plus water plus nascent oxygen okay these are the these are the some partial uh, products from the reactant so um, if these reactants are involved in the reaction then you must know such kind of partial products are formed there so uh, in every reaction there is uh, formation of uh, nascent oxygen uh, so partial uh, equations method is generally used for such kind of reactant where partial product uh, is one of the product is nascent oxygen so these reactions you must know that uh, what kind of products are formed in the first step uh, when these reactants are involved uh, so uh, definitely you uh, i think you have understood about this and this you have to know um, in the first step so uh, next step in next step you must know about nature of oxides nature of oxides when reacting gives different kinds of oxide you must know that uh, what, whether these oxides are acidic basic or neutral type then uh, metallic oxide if there is metallic oxides like uh, potassium oxide sodium oxide like like this uh, chromic oxide like this way uh, etc these are basic so metallic oxides are basic and basic oxides always react with acidic acid and they form the salt and water for example if there is a potassium oxide and if you have acid H2SO4 then base this is base and this is acid so acid base react to give salt and water 
K2S4 and water. So you must know that if there are partial product oxides and the, if these oxides are basic or acidic or neutral, then uh, what kind of reaction um, they show that you must know. So uh, if there is potassium oxide, metallic oxide, then it gives um, the reaction with acid and it gives salt and water. If the oxides are if the oxides are acidic, acidic. For example, if the oxides are acidic like carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, uh, iodine pentoxide, etc. P two O five etc. P two O five etc. These are non-metallic oxide, right? These are non-metallic oxide, and non-metallic oxides are uh, definitely non-metallic oxides are what acidic. So acidic oxide when reacts with water, then they give uh, their parent acid like CO2 plus water. If reacts, then it gives carbonic acid. Similarly, uh, if you react uh, sulfur dioxide, uh, like uh, for example P2O5, uh, if P2O5 is uh, present there as a partial product, then P2O5 reacts with water. Uh, it gives uh, S3PO4 phosphoric acid. So you must know that if the oxides are acidic, you know, uh, these acidic oxides react with water to give parent uh, acid. For example, carbon dioxide reacts with water to give carbonic acid and P2O5 reacts with uh, S2O to give uh, phosphoric acid. Like this way, uh, you can so you can make the um, acids uh, in the reaction. So uh, you must have this kind of concept, okay? For example, uh, if you have uh, like different oxides, water, then uh, carbon monoxide, like this way, these are you know these are neutral oxides. Uh, these are neutral oxide, and these they do not react with acid and base, and they uh, we can leave them as it is as a stable product. So uh, in ne next step, you must have the concept of uh, some nature of oxides, whether oxides are acidic or basic. So uh, this is uh, number two, and in number three. Uh, in number three, uh, you must know about uh, nascent oxygen is formed or nascent uh, hydrogen is formed. So in number three, during the reaction, whether there is formation of nascent oxygen or nascent hydrogen, you must know about it. Uh, in number C, uh, for example, if you have nitric acid, okay, th this kind of problem is often uh, we uh, in control with, uh, we often uh, have problem with nitric acid. For example, if nitric acid reacts with uh, the metal uh, which are highly reactive like zinc, uh, zinc. Uh, so different reactions, different uh, metals are very more reactive than hydrogen. So uh, like the metal uh, which are zinc, iron, uh, like this way, tin, aluminium, uh, these, uh, these metals are, you know, these are more reactive than hydrogen. So uh, when nitric acid reacts with these metals more reactive than hydrogen, more reactive than hydrogen, then they always give always give uh, nascent uh, nascent hydrogen. So nascent hydrogen is produced. So when HNO3 reacts with zinc, nascent hydrogen is produced. Like when HNO3 uh, reacts with iron, they, that produces what nascent hydrogen. Because you know these metal can easily displace the hydrogen from HNO3. So uh, more reactive metal than hydrogen. When it reacts with nitric acid, you must know that there is formation of nascent hydrogen. Similarly, when SNO3 reacts with the less reactive metals, uh, less reactive metals than hydrogen, like you know, less reactive metals mean copper, mercury, then silver, etc. This metal when it reacts with SNO3, uh, then definitely this give always give nascent oxygen. Always gives uh, nascent oxygen. So did you know that when SNO3 reacts with um, more reactive metals like zinc, iron, tin, and aluminium, then they always give nascent hydrogen. While uh, when SNO3 gives uh, reaction with copper, mercury, and silver, which are less reactive than hydrogen, then they always give what a nascent oxygen. So um, uh, and similarly, if they react with non-metals, you know, if SNO3 reacts with non-metals like carbon, sulfur, iodine, phosphorus, uh, etc. Then, if SNO3 reacts with these non-metals, they also give uh, nascent oxygen. Nascent oxygen. You know, so uh, this is Armstrong view, okay? Armstrong view. This is Armstrong view. And you must know in the reaction that when SNO3 reacts with different kinds of metals or non-metals, what kind of uh, product is formed? Whether nascent hydrogen is nascent oxygen. So, uh, that concept you must have. Uh, Therefore, you must know these three concepts, you know, before going uh, to uh, solve the partial equations method, balancing equation by partial equations method, you must know the three concepts.
So first concept is uh, the criteria of product formation, uh, what kind of product is formed, criteria of product. Uh, and next is uh, nature of oxides. And number third is uh, whether nascent hydrogen or nascent oxygen is produced. So if, if you have three, th these three different kinds of uh, concept, then you can easily balance the chemical reaction by partial equations method. So what are the steps in partial equations method? Okay, steps in partial equation method. I'm going to talk about some steps in partial equations method. Uh, so first step. First step is uh, when the reaction is given to balance, uh, balance by the partial equations method, then uh, write the partial equations, possible partial equations. Write the possible partial equations. Partial equations are theoretical equations. Uh, that you uh, develop by the logic. So write the possible partial equations and balance by heat and trial method. Balance by heat and trial method. Uh, so this is first step. And number two, uh, whenever you make uh, partial equations and you balance it by heat and trial method, uh, then in next step, you multiply, add and cancel. Multiply, add and cancel cancel the intermediate product okay uh, in the reaction you know uh, in partial product uh, partial equation there are many uh, your intermediate products so these intermediate products will be eliminated so for that multiply add and cancel the uh, intermediates intermediates uh, you do such kind of operations okay in second step and in number third uh, you uh, add add and get uh, get net total reaction net total reaction this reaction will be automatically balanced by partial equations method balanced by partial equation method uh, so uh, if you want to balance the chemical equation by partial equations method then you must have three different knowledges and first is you know write the par possible partial equations in correct way and balance them by heat and trial method and number two multiply add and cancel the intermediates and number third add and get a uh, net total reaction uh, so you add all the partial equations and uh, you get the net total equation that is that will be balanced equation by partial equation method so uh, to explain these all uh, things uh, i'm going to give some examples uh, so i show you here that how to balance these equations by partial equations method for example if you have such kind of reactions Okay, if you have uh, such kind of reaction, suppose KMnO4 plus uh, H2SO4 plus H2S, then uh, you have to find the uh, product as well as you have to balance it by partial equation method, suppose. So I'm going to solve it, okay, uh, see here. Uh, if you know one of the reaction very easily, then you can easily uh, apply the idea for other equation as well. So uh, in first step, KMnO4 is decomposed, you know, into K2O, plus MnO plus nascent oxygen here you know KMnO4 gives partial product like potassium oxide manganese oxide and nascent oxygen so uh, uh, this is the first step of partial equation this is one of the partial equation that is given by KMnO4 and you know that potassium oxide is a metallic oxide and that reacts with acid acid is used here as stress for acid so uh, the product which is formed here as a metallic oxide this metallic oxide reacts with acid this is base and this is acid, you know, this is base and this is acid, acid base reaction happens here easily. So it gives K2SO4 plus water, salt and water is very easy to remember that when uh, acid reacts with base then it gives salt and water. So in the next step this K2 has already reacted and MnO, you know, manganese oxide is also basic oxide. So manganese oxide also reacts with H2SO4. It gives MnSO4 manganese sulfate plus water. This is similar as second partial equation step. So uh, when KMnO4 reacts with S2S4, you can easily make three partial equations very easily. And here is the time for nascent oxygen. You know, nascent oxygen is very reactive. You know that nascent uh, is nascent hydrogen or nascent oxygen are very, very reactive. And this very reactive uh, thing that is produced from the KMnO4 that reacts with the remaining reactant S2S. Uh, so S2S is a reducing agent. You know, this is reducing agent and uh, nascent oxygen is oxidizing agent. So when reducing agent uh, meets with oxidizing agent, it reacts as like acid-base reaction. So reducing agent and oxidizing agent reacts to each other. You know, S2S and oxygen when it reacts, then it gives you only water and sulfur as a product. So uh, these are the steps, you know, these are the partial equation steps. So first step is finished. 
because we have already written the partial equations here. Uh, now uh, we must balance the part each partial equations. Okay, uh, you try to balance it by it and trial method. So here a k two is there. So two k and m n is single. So we had already two manganese. So you put two here, and put eight uh, eight oxygen in this side. So already three oxygen here and five. You must put five here over here. So these atoms are uh, hidden balanced by heat and trial method. Uh, here is uh, you know K2SO4 and water this is already balanced so this equation is already balanced and this equation is also already balanced. So uh, our first step writing partial equations and balancing them by a heat and trial method is already finished. So now we uh, cancel the intermediates like nascent oxygen is not our final product because that is very reactive and um, you know potassium oxide and manganese oxide are basic oxide and they react with acid and they cannot be as a final product so they must be cut down so here is potassium oxide and this potassium oxide is caught with this potassium oxide this side and this side will be cut down um, uh, two manganese oxide and here is only one manganese oxide so you must multiply this whole equation by two you cannot only multiply with uh, mno but you should multiply the whole equation into two uh, to cut down this two manganese oxide and this side also two manganese oxides and here is five nascent oxygen you know here is only one uh, nascent oxygen so you multiply this whole equation by five and you cut down this five nascent oxygen and five nascent oxygen so you have cancelled the intermediates now you add and you get the total uh, final uh, product final product and react in as a balanced chemical equation by partial equation method so you know here is left this side as 2 kmno 4 is left and and you know this side S2S4 is there, S2S4, you know, this side uh, 2 S2S4 here and 1 S2S4, 3 S2S4 is present, 3 S2S4 is present and S2S is also present in this side, 5 S2S, okay, 5 S2S. And in next side, you know, K2S4 is present and MNS4, 2 MNS4 is already present there plus, you know, water here, 5 water and here 2 water, 3 water. So total um, eight water is total eight water is present and sulfur you know five sulfur is present so in this way we have seen that um, uh, this equation is balanced uh, we have already identified the product as well product and balanced balance also this equation is balanced also so see here how easy so whenever you have the knowledge of partial equations method then you can easily predict uh, the product uh, in some reactions and you can easily balance the reaction by uh, heat, um, by partial equations method so the reactions involving potassium permanganate potassium dichromate uh, etc you can easily balance by the same way i'm going to give uh, another example here uh, involving nitric acid so let us see that what kind of uh, reaction we have uh, for example if we have copper plus nitric acid uh, conk nitric acid then what happens okay let us see this reaction copper plus nitric acid so very easy to react uh, basically very easy to predict the product and balance it see there uh, so whenever you have uh, nitric acid conk type of nitric acid i have already told you that it gives uh, NO2 plus water plus nascent oxygen because you know copper is a less reactive metal uh, than hydrogen so it produces nascent oxygen i have already told you because copper is less reactive metal and nascent oxygen should be produced. Nascent oxygen is produced by nitric acid by decomposing itself. So uh, uh, then uh, this nascent oxygen uh, when reacts with copper, copper, you know, copper metal reacts with nascent oxygen because nascent oxygen is very reactive and reacts with metal. So it gives CuO. And you know, Cu is a basic oxide, you know, this cop cupric oxide is basic and basic oxide when reacts with SNO3 because SNO3 reacts with SNO3 acts as both uh, oxidizing agent by producing nascent oxygen as well as it also acts as acid so copper when reacts with SNO3 then it gives copper nitrate plus S2 salt and water so these are the partial equations now uh, we uh, just balance them by uh, heat and trial method uh, so see here we have one nitrogen and one nitrogen two hydrogen and it is only one hydrogen so let this you put two there hydrogen are balanced so oxygen 3 is a 6 uh, here 2 and 1 3 here you must put there 3 so this reaction is balanced by heat and trial method. This reaction is already balanced and here you must put two uh, balance the nitrate. Nitrate ion is two here and only one nitrate is here. So you put two there. <coughs> so in this way you have uh, here is CU, okay? Okay, you balance it by um, heat and trial method. Now 
you eliminate the uh, intermediate three nitrogen oxygen and it is only one nitrogen oxygen so you multiply this by three and three nitrogen oxygen and three nitrogen oxygen are cut down a three cubic oxide is only one so like this this reaction is also multiplied by uh, use three and uh, three copper oxide and three copper oxide are cut down so you know uh, three copper three copper plus here two nitric acid and here is six nitric acid so eight nitric acid and gives you know uh, NO2 single NO2 plus here three copper nitrate plus water you know how many watts are here one, one water is here and uh, three water so four water is present so this reaction is balanced you know this is balanced by partial equations method so uh, surely i think you know that this is the balanced chemical equation so copper when reacts with conch hn3 what is the product you you should not be worried about you don't need to be worried about what is the product so product are easily identified here and uh, this reaction is balanced also so if you have the concept of partial equation method then you can easily balance the chemical equation as well you can easily product the uh, easily predict the product uh, so I'm going to talk about now nitric acid when it reacts with more reactive metal like zinc plus uh, SNO3. Zinc plus uh, 1 is to 1 SNO3, more deadly conch SNO3, what happens? So as I have already told you that zinc is more reactive than hydrogen. So zinc reacts with SNO3, uh, and it releases nascent hydrogen and to release nascent hydrogen, it gives zinc nitrate plus nascent hydrogen because zinc can easily displace uh, hydrogen nascent hydrogen because zinc is more reactive you know more reactive metal can displace the hydrogen from the acid so this is the first step of partial equation method so SNO3 should not be broken into nascent oxygen because zinc is more reactive more reactive metal displace the hydrogen first so this is the first step and you know uh, this nascent uh, hydrogen uh, nascent hydrogen and nitric acid uh, reacts to each other uh, here it gives you know uh, NO2 plus S2O plus uh, O, you know, uh, it gives uh, NO2 and water. You can easily form the NO2 and water here. <coughs> so when uh, nitric acid reacts with zinc, you know, when nitric acid reacts with zinc, it easily gives the NO2 and water. So very simple steps. You should not form the nascent oxygen as uh, zinc is more reactive than hydrogen. So these are the two partial equation step and you balance it now by uh, your nitrate ion 2 and here is only one nitrate so you put 2 here and you need to put there 2 so this reaction is balanced and this reaction let us see uh, okay here nitrogen is 1 1 and hydrogen uh, let's see oxygen first here 2 oxygen and 1 oxygen 3 oxygen and here is 3 oxygen so balance and hydrogen 2 here is also hydrogen 2 so this reaction is already balanced in balance state you know two hydrogen two hydrogen one hydrogen one hydrogen and three oxygen three oxygen so and now you just uh, multiply this nascent hydrogen should be cut down because it is intermediate this is highly reactive and this two hydrogen uh, two nascent hydrogen and two nascent hydrogen are cut down so what is the final product now zinc plus uh, four SNO3 you know four nitric acid when it reacts it gives zinc nitrate plus two NO2 plus uh, you know two water so this is the final product as well as this is what balanced chemical equation so did you know that how easy is uh, to balance and how easy is to product uh, is, predict the product when um, you know the concept of partial equations so partial equations method is a very important method uh, to balance the chemical equation uh, next uh, example i am going to give for manganese dioxide you can give uh, example of different kinds of reactions but here I'm supposed to give uh, one reaction that is MnO2 involving MnO2. MnO2 plus HCl, it gives MnCl2 plus water plus uh, chlorine. So how to balance this equation, okay? Otherwise, uh, if you don't know the product, then uh, how to identify the product as well as how to balance the chemical equations. So first of all, MnO2 should be broken into partial product like MnO plus nascent oxygen. You know, this is a very easy step because MnO2 is oxidizing agent and it gives nascent oxygen in first step a manganese oxide is basic oxide you know basic oxide uh, when reacts with hcl acid then it should react acid base reaction it should be acid base reaction uh, it must give salt and water mncl2 and water similarly okay similarly this nascent oxygen should react with uh, hcl then because nascent, is, uh, nascent oxygen is very strong oxidizing agent and HCl is reducing agent. So your HCl acts as uh, both acid. 
here it's acting as acid and here it is acting as reducing acid so when it reacts you know as 2 plus cl2 is formed s2 uh, and cl2 are formed so for example see um this is the example and now first of all we balance it by partial equations uh, by heat and trial method so mno2 this is already balanced and this is here 2 chlorine so you must put there 2 uh, otherwise it is balanced and if you see this then here you must put 2 then it is already balanced so you cut down now by the intermediate so oxen and oxen are intermediate so you cut it and you know mno1 mno and 1 mno cut down so what is the net reactions here mno2 plus uh, you know 4 hcl it gives mncl2 plus 2 water plus cl2 so this is balanced chemical equation as well as the product uh, product identification so uh, in today's my class i think you have uh, known about the partial equations method how to do it and how to make uh, how to predict the product in an easy way and how to balance chemical reactions so um, i hope that you like my uh, videos because this is the great concept for the beginners uh, if you are a beginner of the chemistry uh, education and then you have to know about it so uh, in next video i am going to talk about the next topic so till then uh, bye bye